Hi guys. Welcome to week two. We are very excited for this week. We get out on the water and pull up our first crab trap. So you can see how many crabs we got. We smoke and cook a 35 pound ham, which was amazing. Uh, we butcher one of our Muscovy ducks. Uh, and we also go through another technique for growing mushrooms out of a bag. So let's get to it. Let's go. On our way. <laughs> it didn't start it yet. Okay, go. Hi right, guys, we are on our way to pull our first uh, crab traps of our challenge here, which is pretty exciting. So uh, we're heading down to the marina and our boat is unfortunately not quite in the water just yet. But one of the great things about being on a small island and a great little sportive community here is uh, we have friends with boats. So we're gonna go borrow our friend Ryan's boat and head up and pull our traps that we set the other day. So fingers crossed we get something for dinner. Couple that are too small, if they're under like six and a half inches or females, back in the water, live another day. Small as well. You, you are free. Nice big keeper. You can tell the males have the point a bit. Uh, on the bottom, females have much more of a, a rounded one. Four big keepers. Look at that. Four crabs. I'm so excited to eat all these. It's a beautiful day here on the west coast. Yeah. My fingers are gonna fall off. <laughs> I feel like a rookie. I don't know why I didn't bring gloves. Austin's you know, even on the boat. Yeah. First one of the year. Okay, so we got our first uh, haul of crab there, and now we're just cracking a whole bunch of crab, which is always a time consuming thing. Get started on the crab from all that we got, and one more half to go, and we'll make some cakes. And he's been eating it as he goes, so there's way less than there That's should be. Half the fun when you're the one doing the work. <laughs> I'm doing work, I'm holding a camera. <laughs> no. Babe, did you wash your hands before you did this? Nope, sorry. <laughs> Hope you're hungry. Tell us about these cakes, babe. Not that exciting. I guess it kind of is. <laughs> we're just gonna break this crab up a little bit. We've got uh, a couple eggs that we're gonna throw in there as a binding agent. We're gonna use some of our smaller eggs. We kind of save our big ones for eating for breakfast. We've got a couple of our smaller silky eggs from our bantam breeds that we'll use up. And we've got our one cheat item that we're doing this year. So. 
Got a little bit of flour that's going to hold them together as well. What are you going to top it with? Uh, we don't, we're pretty limited right now, aren't we? Don't have a lot of vegetables going yet, so it's going to be a bit of a, a keto diet to start, but we got a couple pea shoots, a couple chilies. Oh, we got uh, some prosciutto crisps that we're going to do with that too. So we got some of our prosciutto that's ready. Chris did such a good job of making the prosciutto, but it's pretty <laughs> salty, pretty so salty. we're hoping with a little fry it might, might be uh, a little better. But he did a great job, so mm. I'll give him that. <laughs> Do you want a little bit spicy? Should put a little bit of chili in there? Yeah. So we've got some of those left over from last year's harvest. Okay, let's do that. They fried, but they look good. Ooh, there's some seed. That's going to be hot, baby. Straight in with the hands that are unwashed still. <laughs> They're washed, I was joking. <laughs> Balls. <laughs> <laughs> Your family's gonna watch this. They're used to it. <laughs> Where do you think I got it from? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna wash off my hands again. Let's get these in the pan. So, one of the other things you gotta get used to again is no cooking oil. So, we got some leftover uh, bacon fat there that we kept from uh, breakfast the other day. fried and we're gonna get our prosciutto going in another pan. How's my dinner coming? Almost there. Almost there dear. Go with it, but let me know what you think. That's really good. Is it? Mm -hmm. Not bad? Mm -hmm. Okay, enjoy. Thanks. <laughs> Come try. So one other thing we just quickly wanted to show you this week was we're going to try uh, growing mushrooms in a different method, uh, just kind of in a grow block. So we've actually purchased this. It comes in a bag like this, already inoculated, and it's super easy. All you have to do is cut a couple X's in it so that oxygen can get in. Um, these bags are kind of specialized. They have that little kind of vent that you can see on the front there. So in one of our future how-to videos, we've actually ordered a bunch of these vents that we can use on bags so that we can try and keep this cycle going ourselves and keep inoculating grain to develop our own bags that we can then use as grow blocks or use them as we did with the bucket method uh, with the oyster mushrooms. So with a grow block, all you have to do is cut a couple holes in the front here and just kind of a little X just to open that up. And you can do one on one side if you only want it kind of coming out one side, if you're putting it inside on a windowsill or something. I usually like to do one in the top um, as well as one on either side. So you get a couple of fruitings. They probably won't be quite as big, but you'll kind of see that that will come out of either side. 
And with this too, because they're already inoculated, they do not need to go into a dark place. We're here in the Pacific Northwest, so it's still rainy and kind of perfect mushroom weather, not very sunny out yet. So we're just gonna leave this outside on the deck. As soon as it starts fruiting, we are gonna spray it with water uh, on a regular basis, just make sure they don't dry out. And uh, hopefully soon we should have some nice big fruitings of lion mane, which is the first time that we've grown lion mane mushrooms. So that has a bunch of health benefits that we're excited to, to try out and add into our variety for our diet as well. So we'll keep you posted on how that goes. Okay, so one of our projects this week is we've had so much rain all winter long. We've had atmospheric rivers and it hasn't stopped raining for more than a couple days. So our front pig pen is pretty muddy and we've got piglets coming pretty soon. So um, we're gonna get the two mamas moved out of there and into a somewhat covered uh, barn here. It'll be a lot better for them, less mud. Um, the big pigs are probably okay in there, not ideal, but uh, the piglets will definitely be too much for them. So um, we're gonna seal this off, put a door in here and get all this stuff cleaned out and make them a new home. Hey guys, so uh, yesterday we started on this barn here and we've kind of got this one piece in place. It was an existing piece of barn that was crazy heavy. So we've uh, got that in place yesterday and now I just need to finish off the door right there. And uh, yeah, hopefully later today we'll start moving the pigs up here and get them into a nice dry, dry spot. Of course, as soon as we do this, it's a nice, beautiful, sunny day and uh, the pen's probably gonna dry out, but we'll get them up here anyway. So they got a nice separate space to have their piglets. Well, guys, not my finest work, but the base of the door is in. Got lots of support along the bottom there for the pigs, which is the main thing, because they'll try and push through anything. So we'll get some more planks along the bottom there and seal her up. Okay, so today is moving day. <laughs> We're moving these big pigs into a barn to have their babies. And you're going to have to wish us luck because uh, it's going to be a little sketchy. <laughs> and this isn't our bread. We saved this because we knew we were going to need it to lure them. So. Definitely. One down, got one in. Knock on wood, pretty uneventful. She followed the bread the whole way, so. More to go, we'll get some straw in there, some more feed, and hope it doesn't work out. Okay, two pigs in their new barn. We still gotta get some straw down, and we're gonna get some other. Uh, of their regular feed, they just like the bread more. I knew they'd follow it, so they're in their new barn, and we'll get them all set up to start having some babies. Start farrowing. Hi guys. So the things we're going to be doing uh, this week is never a favorite thing for us, but we're going to be harvesting for one of our ducks here early on in our challenge, and uh, going to get some more variety into our diet. So we're not going to go through this process on YouTube. Not everyone wants to see it, but we are going to go through a more detailed how to on how to do this humanely from start to finish and butcher duck on from the field. So we'll put a, a link in the description below and put a little link up above as well. If you want, are interested and you do want to see more of that, you can go and watch that on that channel. Otherwise, we'll just probably come back and show you guys some of the finished products. So never fun. It's still an emotional thing. Steph and I did it for the first time last year, but part of to live off the land and, and doing what we're doing so we'll check back in with you guys in a bit okay so one that we are really excited for um this year unfortunately we missed uh butchering it all but we butchered uh got about a 450 pound 500 pound pig about a month ago so we started doing some cured meats prosciutto and salami going and one thing we're gonna finish off today is a ham which was a massive 37 pound ham when it started so it's been curing for about 40 days and now we're gonna put it in the smoker for about four to five hours until it reaches an internal temperature of 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can see too, we've got two of these and it's kind of got this beautiful marbling on it. So I'm really excited for the prosciutto one that we haven't pulled out yet. We'll leave that one for another couple days, but you can just see how easily that meat slices off even before drying. So that's gonna be some nice, beautiful prosciutto on the other one. So we're gonna give this a good rinse, let it soak all the salt off for 20 minutes or so, and then we'll get her in the smoker. Have some ham this year. Okay, so obviously not uh, ideal. That is a massive ham for our little smoker, but we've got it in there. We've just plugged it in and we're gonna let it uh, smoke away. I think I said four to five hours. Realistically, it's probably gonna be longer just due to how uh, 
how big it is there. But uh, yeah, we'll show you some updates along the way. Hey, babe. What do try, you think? Try not to set the deck on fire again, okay? <laughs> it is going to be on the deck again, but we've uh, <laughs> we've got a new smoker since then, so I didn't make my own sterno this time. <laughs> Okay, so we had our ham that's been smoking for about five hours now. It's still not quite coming up to temperature, so we're just gonna finish it off in the oven. It's supposed to get to about 140 to 160, and after smoking for this long, it is only at about 90 Fahrenheit still right now. With our meat thermometer, so we're gonna take it out, finish it off in the oven. I think it's partly because it's still so cold outside we're doing it at night, and also just it's such a massive ham. So let's get her in the oven and finish her off. Nice smoke on it. Oh, look at that. Juicy. Yeah, let's get her in the oven. <sighs> Sorry, I got smoke in my eyes. Okay, so we've just got it set at 170, which is the lowest that our oven goes, and we'll uh, probably won't be very long just to bring it up to temperature, and we'll pull it out and have a little sample when it's done. Okay, so we had the ham in there for about half an hour. It still wasn't quite coming up to, I don't know why I'm talking about this. Uh, it still wasn't quite coming up to temperature. So we've uh, bumped it up to 250 there. Um, and we're just talking how nice it would be to do a glaze. And we were like, oh, too bad we don't have brown sugar or any of those things that we can't have anymore. And we remembered we have some frames of honey there left over from last year. So um, we're just gonna cut off a corner off of either side here and extract some honey and do a nice honey glaze on our ham when it comes out. We wanted it to hold up and it fell through, right? Isn't that what it is? Yeah, I think we used like a string and pencils or something. How about that for a jerry rig? It should have been your middle name. <laughs> jerry rig? <laughs> Perfect. Just like we planned it. Okay, we'll let that drip and check on the ham again in another 20 minutes. Okay, so our ham has reached internal temperature, getting up there now finally about 115. Um, it looks good, you can really smell the smoke on it. Uh, we're gonna put a little bit of a honey glaze on there and stick it back in for the 20 minutes, half an hour, and it should be done and ready for tasting. Look how amazing that looks. Okay, so we don't have a lot of honey, but we're gonna put on there whatever we can. That's been dripping for half an hour. Okay, we're gonna get that back in the oven for another, put about 20 minutes, half an hour here, and then hopefully time for a little taste test. But this thing looks amazing. And it's massive, this should feed us for a while. Okay, moment of truth. It looks amazing, it smells amazing, the glaze looks good. So let's uh, see how this is. Oh, that's a nice color. Do you want a little less fat than that? Oh, look how nice that color is. That's the pink of ham supposed to be. Pretty salty, <laughs> but pretty good.
It could definitely be worse. I bet if you get in it, it won't be as bad, but it tastes like salty ham. And a lot of it. Okay, we'll get it all cut up and packaged away for the night and show you some other things we'll do with it in the next couple days. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> guys, thanks for watching this week. We hope you enjoyed this uh, episode as much as we did. Uh, please help us out and hit subscribe below if you can. Uh, and also, if you'd like to support us in making these videos, we'd love if you could join our uh, membership. You can hit the join button below. It's only $2.99 a month, and you get some great extra videos, extra posts, um, one of which is our weekly weigh-in videos to kind of track our weight loss and gain that we've had throughout this uh, journey, being on and off this diet. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed this week, and we'll see you again next week. See ya.